Here's some crap, but come on, it's Saturday night. clapping on the two and the four. You know how hard that is for white people? No offense. Sam, uh, you know, uh, it wasn't quite true that you only hear him sing once a year. Yeah, so we're here, which is like once a year, so it's really twice a year that you hear him. We always call him up to do this song. So, Anthony, come on up, man, join us. Sixty-two. <laughs> <laughs> it's a song called Yahweh. It's a it's a song. We're gonna I guess we'll end with this. Um, this is a song that's special because it's it's uh, it was written out of my my heart for the Jewish people and and God's refl- I, I think in fact they know reflecting God's heart for the Jewish people.
Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Sam, thank you. We love coming. <laughs> Bob and Sherry Marino. Watch for them. Watch for them on our calendar so you can come back. And thank you. See, it is the only other time Anthony will get up. And so don't you think Anthony should sing here more than? I think somebody needs to start a petition. I do want to. Oops. I do want to acknowledge, acknowledge Paul Fela, who is here with us tonight as a guest. Stand up. Say, see who you are. He is the newest addition to the Heaven family. And he uh, wrote and produced a show called The Class of Life. How many people here have seen it? I'm not kidding. He's almost becoming like a rendo night, right? Where I think it's looking like it's going to be almost like once a month until you go on Broadway. Um, it is the most, whoops, I've got a lot of reverb. Okay. It is the most outstanding show, Jules can say, right? We all feel that way. Um, it is actually sold out for April. We are just reservations away from being sold out for May 9th. So we now are June 
27th, but I am telling you, if there's anything you ever do, come see Paul in his show, The Class of Life. You will not be the same. While you're sitting there, and I'm sure a lot of people feel this way, instantly you have 20 people in your head that you're like, I gotta ask this one, I gotta ask this one, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. It is the most phenomenal show. It, it's nostalgic. It's, um, I can't explain all the, for about a week we were all Facebooking each other because of how it leaves us, so thank you. Thank you for bringing it here. It was the perfect love connection. And I feel so bad because my in loves, I haven't yet, I'm trying to go, you gotta come, dad, you're a cop, you're Italian, you'll love the whole show. <laughs> and it, really the story of uh, an Italian family who go to Rose University and, um, and it's so amazing and it was funny, at the end of the first show, uh, Paul looks over at me, he goes, you know, I, I know you're not Italian, but you know, like how do you feel? I go, I'm coming to your house for gravy and macaroni. What do you mean how I feel? <laughs> I'm converting telling you so thank you because we love I could see the show a million times a million times and my prayer for you I've said this my prayer is that one day that you'll get like full production DVD that it may go all over the world so it doesn't have to stay within the New York area and that is really what I see for you so all right I'm going to bring up Mr. Frank Rendo. Um, now, he will, be, after Frank, we're actually going to take that, this is the longest other than the class of life that everyone sat still, because we do it 30 minutes, bam, 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 we get up. But, um, but I really wanted to fit everybody in, and then we have like a super great surprise um, coming up. But uh, Karen Orlando's here, Frank Rendo's here, and, um, and then something really awesome that you're going to enjoy later on. So at this time, Frank Rendo has been singing here 19 and a half years. The first Saturday of every month. And if you love like the Michael Blue Blaze style of music and Harry Connick Jr. and all that, if you is there anyone here that's never seen Frank Rendo? Anyone never? Come on, Sal. Stop that. These are all the regulars. Okay, because I was gonna say if you've never seen him, I was gonna give you a gift certificate. But you oh no, you're not fast enough. Sorry. Sal, lying, and I have to forgive you, because look where we are. Anyway, for the longest time, everybody kept saying when we first opened, you gotta have this guy, you gotta have this guy. And I just did not have the nerve to call him. Because I really thought, I, like to me in my mindset, it's only this little tiny place and we can't pay him anything and why would he want to come here, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and I really felt like I was gonna invite you to the prom and he was gonna say no and I couldn't take the rejection. So uh, I don't know how it finally ended. Somehow someone else kind of came in third party and, uh, and he never left and he's been with us. And we have a special agreement. I said, you could travel and do concerts all over the world. As long as you're back by the first Saturday of the month. I don't have a problem. So anyway, please welcome Frank Rinder. Actually, I would like to invite up here Judge John Andrew Clay and Susan Rizzo for a very special presentation. This on? Okay. Uh, we're from the government and we're here to help. <laughs> yeah, I just, no, no, seriously, seriously, Tuesday, Tuesday's a big day for us guys on the public dole, uh, so it's kind of, you know, tax day. Uh, special thanks to all of you who are on withholding. We're, <laughs> we really appreciate it. No, I really do, um, because I don't know what I'd have to do if I had to work for a living, but... Um, that having been said, this is Susan Rizzo. Susan really, yeah, give it, give it up for Susan. Um, but by the way, Anthony, and I'm serious, I really want to tell you something. I, I'm, I, I, I got mine tonight. I was ready to go after you sang. I was so blessed. And, I, and, I, and I'm, what I'm about to say is serious. It's going to sound maybe like a joke, but it's not. I was reconvinced tonight that there's a heaven. 
because when I get there, I know the Lord's going to give me a voice like yours. You're going to still have yours. I'm not taking it. You know what I'm saying? There's no, there's no active warrants that I know of that we have to take in. But the deal is that as the Lord leads you, there is a anointing, breaking talent. It's not even, it's not, Anthony, it's not even a talent. It's, it's just, listen, thank you. Thank you. So the first thing we're going to do um, is Susan Rizzo, who when I first met Susan, by the way, she had a different name. So no, I don't, I don't know what that was all about. In my business, we call, yeah, 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 in my business, we call that an AKA, also known as, you know. And I, but, but Your Honor, they sent the warrant out in the old name. I, oh, I got that. I got that. I got that. Matter of fact, when I was with Legal Aid, I represented a guy named Elvis who didn't want to get arrested. Yeah, he didn't want to get arrested. He had an open alcohol container uh, charge, so when they went to pick him up, he said he wasn't Elvis. But they knew he was Elvis, so they locked him up for a false impersonation, which brought him in front of, in front of the, the, the district court. So I'm there, I'm, I'm about you know, a couple of months away from being a judge, and I, and I said, I'm, I got this one, I got Elvis. I'm doing Elvis. So I go up there, we, we, I said, the people, is there an offer? And they, they, they uh, reduced it down to a disorderly conduct, gave him time served, and then what happened? Elvis left the building. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Maureen, you know, where are you? You're still here, Maureen? So Maureen gets all upset yesterday. She doesn't have makeup on. I came without makeup and hair. <laughs> and by the way, can we have a show of hands that all of us here who did not wear uh, waterproof mascara? Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Sal. Sal's better looking than I am, though. <laughs> but we all knew that. And by the way, John Shea, could you tell John thanks a lot for the crack about being 70? <laughs> this happens to be the 20th anniversary of my 50th birthday, in addition to being your 20th. Thank you. I got this pulmonary embolism. It's a lot of fun. It kicks the crap out of my esophagus. I'm literally laying on a sick bed on March 31st, 1st and 2nd of April. My birthday's a third. My major prayer, that's no, all right, I'm here. <laughs> and Frank is saying, when's he going to get off? So my major prayer was that I would live to Thursday so that the obituary would say I made it to 70. <laughs> well, here it is. An I'm an answer to prayer. You Thank you. Thank you. Susan is now going to read a citation from um, Assemblyman Andrew Rea. Assemblyman Rea is the son of um, Joanne Rea, who is a close friend of mine. So is Andrew, but um, Joanne and I go back to the 70s and 80s in terms of uh, when I was a political... I used to... Uh, anyway, I was a political... <laughs> Before you went to I was the guy they would say, don't take him off. But that's all right. Uh, so... They say that in court now. So now you get to read the beautiful citation from Andrew Rea. Um, from the New York State Assembly. The microphone. microphone. Sorry. There you go. That's it. Yeah, either one. Okay. Take this one. You want, I'll, I'll get out of the way. I'm easy. From the New York State Assembly, this is a citation. A closer. Thank you. In recognition of uh, 20th anniversary, whereas Samantha's Little Bit of Heaven is so deservingly honored by the State Assembly of New York and the community of East Northport at a celebratory anniversary concert held in recognition of its 20 years of dedicated service, and whereas a great state is only as great as those persons and organizations who give exemplary service to their community through participation in voluntary programs, through unique personal achievement, and through a lifetime of good citizenry, and whereas founded in April 1994 by Samantha Tetro, Samantha's Little Bit of Heaven 
excels in its community service initiatives, presenting Bible-based events, including gospel singers, Bible studies, family-friendly comedy nights, and support groups. Samantha's has become a mainstay in the community and has earned the respect and recognition of all those who have been touched by its program. And whereas for the past 20 years, over 100,000 guests have come to Samantha's to be a part of the experience, performers have come from all of the United States and the world. And I have no doubt that this success, Samantha's have, that the success Samantha's has seen over the past two decades will continue long into the future. And whereas it is clear how through this dedication to be a positive influence on the lives of others and an outstanding commitment to the community, Samantha's Little Bit of Heaven is most deserving of this prestigious honor. Now, therefore, be it resolved that as a duly elected member of the State Assembly of New York and on behalf of the residents of the 12th Assembly District on this 12th day of April in the year 2014, I congratulate and commend Samantha's Little Bit of Heaven as worthy of the esteem of both the community and the great state of New York. But wait, there's more. I have a citation, a certificate of recognition from Senator John Flanagan, who I used to work for, in recognition of outstanding dedication and ministry in our communities, the special celebration of their 20th anniversary, Senator John J. Flanagan, New York State, 2nd District. But wait, there's more. Samantha Tetro. Samantha's Little Bit of Heaven, regarding the 20th anniversary of Samantha's Little Bit of Heaven, April 12, 2014. Dear Samantha, congratulations on 20 years of serving the Lord and the community at Samantha's Little Bit of Heaven. Samantha's Little Bit of Heaven is truly an example of the sovereign hand of the loving Savior moving and building his kingdom. It has stood the test of time and as such stands tall as an irrefutable example of the fulfillment of the prophecy of Solomon in Psalm 20, 127.1, that unless the Lord builds the house, the builder labors in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the gods stand watch in vain. From the humble beginnings of your broken heart for a lost and dying world and your continued compelling public confession that 20 years ago you didn't have a clue about how to start a venture such as this when you received the burden to do so, to this day, 20 years later, the fruit of his presence is evident when we see that tens of thousands have been fed spiritually, hundreds have had the chance to minister the word of God and his truth and love, while countless lives have been touched and changed. In the world, 20 years in marks the time that one would look to retire and reflect on one's many accomplishments. But in the Lord, this is just the beginning, because to him, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day or like a watch in the night. So congratulations on 20 years of stepping stones which have brought you and Samantha's little bit of heaven to the threshold of what Jesus has in store for the future. I can only imagine. So it is in his love that I remain your grateful friend, Judge John Andrew Kay. know is when Susan was reading that I was like thinking to myself I can't say those words and I can't spell those words <laughs> because God uses the foolish things to confound the wise because God can use someone who knows nothing but just says yes it's the only difference I just said yes could you use me right here in East Northport because I didn't want to go to Africa <laughs> I really didn't they had a call to be a missionary and I went up and I just said, you know, Lord, could you use me right here? There's people who don't know you right here. And um, so I just want to encourage He hears the desires of your heart. He says the laborers are few. The harvest is great, but the laborers are few. And so you're a laborer. Let's not be few because he can do anything. You are the fruit of just a little thought 20 years ago. 
why can't there just be a place for good people? So this belongs to all of you, all the supporters and volunteers and musicians and actors and <laughs> teachers and everybody. It belongs to all of you. So on behalf of all of you, I accept this. Thank you. Thank you. We need to get new. These are turning blue. They're fading. We need to raise money for that. New, new plastic, plastic things. So, what we're gonna do now is we're going to take up an offering. Because what you give at the door is still not enough to keep this place going throughout the month. And then we'll take a break, a short break. I always say every month when I stand here and take up the offering for a little bit of heaven that this is good soil to plant your seed in. I've been uh, blessed to be associated with this ministry for n almost 20 years and I know that the other artists that, that regularly perform here are very grateful to have the stage and to, it's a privilege to stand here before you. And when you give tonight, you become a part of this whole miracle. So let's, uh, let's just search our hearts. I know that Samantha's overhead here is about $12,000 a month. We're not part of a building, uh, we're not part of a church, we're an independent work here. So um, everything is paid for by what you give. Samantha does not take a salary for an 80, 80 hour a week job. So we are so blessed to really know her and be a part of this great, great thing that God has done for us. And her vision is so magnificent. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you for Samantha and thank you for her vision and for her stepping out in faith. Look what you have done. And you did this for us and for all those that have yet to come through that door and to breathe in the atmosphere of your presence. Lord, we, we ask that you bless this, this offering this great offering, Lord, this magnificent celebration and fundraiser event that we can move forward with what is given tonight and enlarge the tent. Bless this offering to meet the needs of this ministry and bless the giver as well. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we are very full tonight, so make sure that you give the ushers the uh, right of way to get through all the tables. Samantha, do you have anything else to, I know you're a woman of few words and. Um... Thank you so much everyone. Um, after re they receive the offering, we're gonna try to take the quickest break in the history of heaven only because I don't want you to miss a thing and I'm sensitive on time, but Frank Rendell's gonna come up and share and pass to Karen Orlando, and then we've got something at the end which is um, phenomenal. So I'm just gonna wait till they come through. I think since you're a horticulturist, you should pick out the plastic plants. <laughs> right? I'll go get you two Okay. Are you having a good time? Yeah. I hope so. I want this to bless you. Now watch everyone run to the bathroom, because other than the class of life, it's the longest that anybody's ever sat here straight through. Okay, let's turn on the lights. We'll meet you back here in a few minutes. Thank you.
Okay, welcome back, everyone. I want to thank all our volunteers behind the counter, Teresa and Teresa, doing a big job. It's a lot of work tonight. Thank you. All right, how many people here have never seen Frank Rendo? How many people have seen Frank Rendo? I should have asked that. How could you have not seen him, right, all these years? He's going to share. <laughs> well, there's a reason that Frank is here the first Saturday of every month. And always, always, that is the, if there's ever a night to invite someone, it's different. I always say it's kind of like Passover. Why is this night different than any other night? It's different because of who Frank is and what he brings. It's a very healing night. It's a very soothing night. And so if you're stressed and all that, definitely that is the night to be here. But uh, he's been a real blessing to this ministry, part of it, kind of like attached to it, and he can't leave without it. So would you please, please welcome Mr. Frank Rendo. Yeah. I'm the little boy with glasses, the one they call the geek. A little girl who never smiles, cause I got braces on my teeth. I know what it's like to cry myself to sleep. I'm that kid on every playground, was always chosen last. A single teenage mother trying to overcome my past. You don't have to be my friend, but is it too much to ask? Don't laugh at me, don't call me names, don't get your pleasure from my pain. In God's eyes, we're all the same. Someday we'll all have perfect wings. Don't laugh at me. No. I'm crippled on the corner. You pass me on the street. And I wouldn't be out here begging if I had enough to eat. Don't think I don't notice that our eyes never meet. I lost my wife and little boy when someone crossed that yellow line. The day we laid them in the ground is the day I lost my mind. Right now I'm down to holding this little cardboard sign. Don't laugh at me, don't call me names, don't get your pleasure from my pain. In God's eyes, we're all the same. Someday we'll all have perfect wings. Don't laugh at me I'm fat, I'm thin, I'm short, I'm tall I'm deaf, I'm blind, hey aren't we all? Don't laugh at me, don't call me names don't get your pleasure from my pain In God's eyes, we're all the same Someday we'll all have perfect wings Don't laugh at me, don't call me names Don't get your pleasure from my pain In God's eyes we're all the same Someday we'll all have perfect wings Don't laugh at me 
at me No, don't laugh at me Glenn, I'm going to ask you to lower the track because I really cannot hear myself at all in the, in the monitors, not in the house, in the monitors. Thanks. I want barely any. This next song is one that Samantha asked me to sing. Samantha actually gives me edicts. I have, I have to sing certain things or I don't come back the next month. So, I don't know, I do about 18 songs in a concert, 19 and a half. I wonder, somebody should do the math, see how many songs I've sung. About 17 of the songs that I do in a concert are an edict from her. I get one to do on my own. So, this one is called Not Too Far From Here, and this kind of is the vision for a little bit of heaven. So... I got the call. It was a, uh, I got the call, I got the email. I got the registered letter. This song had to be done tonight. So, this is not too far from here. Somebody's down to their last dime Somebody's running out of time Not too far from here Somebody's got nowhere left to go And somebody needs a little hope Not too far from here And I may not know their name but I'm praying all the same That you'll use me, Lord, to wipe away your tears Cause somebody's crying Not too far from here And somebody's troubled and confused Somebody's got nothing left to lose Not too far from here Somebody's forgotten how to trust And somebody needs a little love Not too far from here It may be a stranger's face But I'm praying for your grace To move in me and take away the fear Somebody's hurting Not too far from here Help me, Lord Not to turn away from pain And help me not to run While those around me weep Fill me, oh Lord With your compassion when somebody finds the road of life ahead too steep Now I'm letting down my guard And I'm opening my heart And help me speak your word to every need to leave Cause Jesus is waiting Not too far from here Yes, Jesus is waiting Not too far from here
This night is as long as my career. <laughs> Did I say that? I didn't say that. Touch my life, Lord, with your hand And teach my heart to understand Peace will fill me when I am in the presence of the Lord In the presence of the Lord In the presence of the Lord I will be be set free I will be be set free I can feel Him all around the Holy Spirit He's coming down he is with me I am now in the presence of the Lord In the presence of the Lord In the presence of the Lord I will be, be set free I will be Set free, oh, 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 of the Lord, I will be, be set free, I will be, be set free, in the presence of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. I will be, I'll be set free in the presence of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, I will be, be set free, yes, yes, I will be. I will be, be set free, yes I will be, be set free, oh I will be, be set free, yes I will be, be set free, yes I will be. In the presence of a mighty Lord, I will be, yes, yes, I will be. In the presence of the Lord.
Thank you. Karen, are you ready? I tried to get it as ready for you as I could, because I know you're going to blow the roof off. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Mr. Frank Rendo. He will be here the first Saturday in May. Actually, I think the night before you is Elvis again. Where's Marie and Greta? Get ready. Yes, Little Bit of Heaven has an Elvis impersonator, and my favorite part of the whole evening is the end when I get to say, Elvis. I left the building. He's actually incredible, incredible. Uh, impersonator sings all gospel and inspirational, so that is May 2nd, which would make me think you're here May 3rd. It's my guess. You seem to be consistently kind of telling. <laughs> It's a whole different energy in the room when Elvis is here. That's all I want to say. Um, thank you so much, Frank. And Frank has CDs. They're over and they're available on the front. And uh, thank you for all the years. And thank you for going to the prom with me. <laughs> oh, my God. Sometimes, just because we're so afraid of the word no, right? All the things we can miss in life because we're afraid to, that we're going to get the, the no word. All right. She's been standing a long time. Is she wearing one of her incredible shoes? Uh, this is what happens on Sunday. It, the first and third Sunday of every month, uh, Karen has her teaching here. And every Tuesday, we're taking it back Tuesday. Okay? But we, we all do first, before worship, what shoes is she wearing? <laughs> and then throughout the entire teaching, we wonder, how does she stand in them? How does she walk back and forth without falling over? But uh, she was standing a very long time, and that's why I switched what we were doing. I'm putting it on after you, so um, I didn't want you to have to wait. I kept just kept looking while she's waiting a long time. Anyway, um, Karen started out singing back in 1995 at our Christian Music Festival. Again, someone that Vincenzo brought over. I remember what she was wearing. She was wearing black and white at the time. And, um, and she would come back and sing uh, sporadically through here, and then different times when she would be singing here, I would say, you know, go, you got a lot of a preacher in you. Like, you got a lot of preacher and you got a lot of singer. So listen, why if you want to preach, come on a Sunday. You want to sing, come on a Saturday. I think we could do this. Well, anyway, fast forward uh, years later. I mean, that was what I saw way back when, but years later, uh, she came to me with a particular teaching that she had, and it was exactly what I was praying for, exactly. It was on w when someone gets offended. And that is so heavy, so heavy, wherever you go. Just, it could be someone doesn't say hello. They don't realize something's on your mind. And, you know, take it personally. And it could be anything. So I said, yes, let's have lunch. Yes, you have to do this. So anyway, she does this teaching. And, and um, people really just knew you for your worship and your music. And they didn't know her as far as teaching. So it was very limited attended. And after the four weeks were up, she said, you know, thank you for taking that chance on me. And I said, well, you know, it's not over. And she goes, what do you mean? I said, oh, I think that that time around was for him. This time around is what it's supposed to be. And that was nine and a half years ago. So she's here every Tuesday. There's a reason I had to put her on last. It's no offense to any other artist here, but she's hard to follow. Okay, because something happens to sometimes, I don't know, the roof. <laughs> we, don't, we don't understand it, it just happens, but all of a sudden we just can't help it. We're either standing or laying down or something. So at this time, would you please welcome Karen Orlando. Love my hair, amen. Thank you, thank you. God is good. It's such a blessing to be here. Um, I've just been so blessed by all the artists, and it's just such an honor to be with everybody. And I just love when I follow Frank. Um, he's one of my favorite singers. When he sings, everybody's just... <laughs> and then when I get up, everybody's like... <laughs> But praise the Lord, I'm just so blessed to be here. I just love what the Lord has done in this place. Um, this place has changed my life. I know it's changed every person's life who's been in here. So we're just going to worship the Lord, and we're going to get together and just celebrate what God has done for 20 years of ministry. Go ahead. I'll do the Frank Rendo thing. Go ahead. And we're just going to get up and praise the Lord. Track two. 
Didn't you read that classy napkin I gave you? Here we go. Come on, let's praise him. 20 years of ministry. Let's thank God for the next 20 years. Hallelujah. Come on, look what the Lord has done, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Hallelujah. Well, get up. Out of your seat, clap your hands, and praise the King of kings. Glorify him. Because God. After all he's done for us, we can't praise him enough. Does anybody here agree with me? So let's praise God, cause he's the Almighty. And get up, get up, out of your seat. Clap your hands and praise the King of Kings. Glorify him, because God has done. Yeah, get up, out of your seat. Clap your hands. Glorify. Every time I turn around, he's opening doors. Every time I look around, he's giving me more, more love, more joy, more peace, more power. He has never left me. He's with me every hour. Let's lift our voices. Let's clap our hands and give it up for Jesus because he's the man. Yeah. Such a good father and my best friend. He's just opening doors. He keeps giving me more, more joy, more power. He has never left me, he's with me every hour. Let's lift our voices, let's clap our hands, and give it up for Jesus, cause he's the man, yeah. Oh, clap your hands, and praise the King of Kings, glorify him, because my God has done so many great things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If I could just get track in the monitor, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. You know, I just love this place, and um, I got to tell you, I've been in ministry about 32 years. Yeah, I started when I was 14. Um, but I got to tell you something. This is a place that is truly effective. You know, a lot of people, they have great gifts. Uh, great voices, great talents, but sometimes they're not effective. But this is a place when people walk in these doors, their lives are changed. Changed forever. And that is fruitful, effective ministry. And that has to do with a heart that Samantha has. Samantha has an ability to love people like I have never seen anybody loves. She has got patience with people. She has been able to look beyond the fault, see the need, see the gifting, see the anointing, but open up the place uh, for people to be able to come 
and, and use their gifts and grow in the God. And um, I really call her the spiritual midwife of the kingdom. And I thank God for her. And she, um, she is really responsible for the transformation that's taking uh, place in my life. Actually, I think, Anthony, you and I have so much in common, even though we are so different. Um, but I don't think there are two people that have been more transformed in this place. Because you were a Christian who turned into a rabbi. I lost 100 pounds. But the thing that brings us both together, not only that we're teachers, both of us tonight, I realized by the video, we lost our hair. I was like, wow, Anthony had hair like, remember my hair was like in the 80s? It was just, you know, so big and so beautiful, but I guess things have got to change, amen? But um, I was thinking about what song to do tonight, and God put this on my heart, because I really believe that this is such a theme song for this ministry. I've been healed, I've been delivered, I've been set free by the blood of the Lamb in this place. And I'll tell you, nobody can walk through these doors without their lives being forever changed. And Samantha, we just want to thank you. Thank you for being obedient to the Lord. Because I know what it's like to be a woman in ministry. And you were doing coffee houses when nobody even heard of what a coffee house was. It was such a step of faith that you had to believe in. You were in that place where God told you something and you were the only one who knew it, and you had to act on it. And I just want to thank you because of your obedience. I've gotten to um, walk in a gift that I never even knew I had until you had seen it. So I thank you for that. Amen. I have been healed. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Father God. Hallelujah. in anguish I was in tears I was weary wounded and sad I've searched many places looking for someone to cure the problems that I had but one day I met a savior who worked miracles with just the touch of his hands and when I touched the hem of his garment I got a testimony I can say I have been healed I've been delivered I've been set free by the blood of the Lamb I have been healed the bondage is broken and I've been made whole by the great I am and all oh, the course of my life will never be the same because of Jesus my life has changed I have been healed I've been delivered and I've been set free since my encounter in his presence I've been refreshed renewed and revived all the years the Lord have eaten you know what God is restoring them back to my life every chain every yoke every prison that once held me has now let me go so here I stand uplifted hand I've come to let the whole be the same because of Jesus my life has changed I have been healed I've been delivered and I've been set free oh and I can explain it and words can describe how I felt when his blood 
me flow All that I can say is that my yesterday will not compare to the glory of my tomorrow Because of Jesus, my life has changed. I have been healed. Yes, Lord. I've been delivered. Thank God I'm free. Yes, I got victory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just lift our hands and just begin to worship him in this place. He is holy. He is faithful. Father God, we worship you tonight, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for who you are, God. In this place, Lord God, in our lives, oh God. Lord, you alone, Father, are worthy tonight. And you are holy, God. You're holy, Lord. You're holy. We worship you. Yeah. And magnify your name. Come on, let's just worship him tonight. Lord, you're holy. Lord, you're holy. You're holy. So holy. I lift you up and magnify your name. But as a token of my love, this is what I'll do. I lift my hand and cry, Lord. You're holy. Oh, you're Lord. holy, Lord. You're holy. And we lift you up, yes. Magnify your All the wonderful things you've given me You love
Hallelujah. Give him praise. Karen Orlando. <laughs> worth, wait, worth waiting for. See you Tuesday. <laughs> Doors open, 6.30, we start at seven. Thank you. Well, you know what? I would be a miss right now. I would be a miss right now if there's someone in here that doesn't know the Lord in the way we sing about tonight, in the way we share about tonight. The God of the impossible. The God that could take a girl's dream turn into something major, all of our dreams. You know, when Karen was sharing before, if we are the same person when we look back, we haven't been changed. But when Jesus touches your life, you look back and you don't even recognize yourself. You look back and you see a photo and you're like, I mean, I look at that and I'm, when, I'm like, that was me? I was a size six? No, no, that's right. Just kidding, just kidding. But I was. But then I was so happiestly, what was it, what would we call that? Happy fat? I was so hysterically happy. So, um, but that's the thing. That's what, when you, not when you know about God, but when you know God, you can't help but change because you start to crave what it is he craves. You start to want what it is he wants. And when you come into that alignment, when you come into that one accord with him, that's when those desires of your heart begin to be fulfilled. Because he puts those desires there. So let's take a moment as we end here tonight. What a, what a greater gift, what I would want for every single person in here, that you would know him. If you left it with anything, whether it was music or comedy, but if you would know him, because he says, I reward those who diligently seek me. Imagine a reward from the one who created everything. How much can he reward us if he spoke this word in, world into existence? So let's bow our heads, let's just pray, and if you feel, this is between you and him, but if you feel that he's tugging at your heart, that you want to know more about the one who created us. You know, I always say the painting needs a painter, sculpture needs a sculptor, the, the book needs a writer, but creation needs a creator. He's our creator, and he created us to love him and to love each other. This is just a little inkling. I can't even wait till we get to the real, I don't want to go as quickly as Anthony does, Anthony's like, can we get a bus and all go right now? <laughs> There's a lot more people down here that need him first, but he's ready to go. He's like, have a party for me. <laughs> Remember that time, love? He, I, all of a sudden, I see a letter. He's donating his organs. I'm like, where are you going? He goes, well, I just want to make sure. I go, I'll make sure. Something happens to you. He goes, where's that letter? I said, I put it away. He goes, you didn't mail it? I'm like, no. He goes, and I said, Anthony, the way this world is today, Somebody could see that you were donating it, and there'll be a drive-by shooting. And you'll go earlier than you're supposed to. So I, <laughs> so I assure you, isn't it true? I assure you that if it should happen, I know it's your request, and I will tell them. But until then, it's not going into some, some government file. So lest there be a drive-by shooting, I would love you to know him before you go. Because I think if this is just a little, little bit of heaven, what is it going to be like in the real heaven? And I love that. We so worry about our regular insurance, our health insurance, our car insurance. A few of us kind of think sometimes of our eternal life insurance. And the best part is free. Such a deal. <laughs> I should have you say that. Such a deal. No, <laughs> All right, let's close our eyes. Let's bow our heads. And Father, we just... We just thank you. We thank you. 
that this is just the evidence of what you've done, how you've made something out of nothing, and that you have a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. Lord, you say in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. But you're also a gentleman. You don't force your way in. You stand outside the door and you knock, and you allow us to open that door and ask you to come into my heart. So Lord, tonight, I want to make that commitment. I ask you to come into my heart, to be my Lord, to be my Savior. I thank you for that eternal life insurance that I get to spend it with you. And I just thank you, Lord, that you sent your son to die on that cross, to rise up in three days. This Easter is the fulfillment of that promise. It's not about the chocolate, although it's good. And it's not about an Easter bunny. It is about what you have done, that you kept your word, that you will rise up in three days. Thank you for that, Lord. I choose you. May this be my spiritual birthday. And right now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you've made that commitment, could you just raise your hand if it's the first time? We thank you. We thank you. Thank you. And God sees you, and God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, this is like such a beautiful night. I also want to thank my sweet three lovely sisters there who made that beautiful living water of water bottles. We've been giving it to the artists throughout the evening. And uh, we'll put some, thank you for what you did for me. I ran running out after you, and, uh, and you already had scooted. Um, our encore for tonight is going to be a, a really awesome little slideshow that you can stay or you don't have to stay. I know it's getting late, um, so that's up to you. But I did, hopefully everyone got one of these before you came in. It was a little bookmark. Did you get, anyone not get one? Okay, so maybe um, Liz and Sally Ann, if you could give these out. And this is, um, this is a verse to me that exemplifies that let's say, let's take someone like Paul. Paul had this vision for the class of life, okay? And it might have been something, you know, like, the Lord gave him the gift and gave him the ability and, and his um, director, Mike, and, and everything else. But sometimes, as much as you're thinking it's going in one direction, then God says, God is able to do more above and beyond what we could ever think or imagine. And that's what I'm believing for you, above and beyond what you could think or imagine with your show. But for each one of us, whatever it is he's called us to, not, not everyone needs to be in, in a public eye. He might just call you to encourage, or he might call you to be hope to somebody, or he might call you to pray for someone who's sick. But I just felt like I, I so wanted this verse to get out there because he gives more. He gives you a dream, and then he quadruples the dream. So in your own time, write behind it, because it's for you privately, Write what it is that you're dreaming for. Write what it is that you're believing for, you're hoping for. Because imagine, it's not just you doing it, but imagine you and God doing it and what he can do above and beyond. And I'm just going to give these, I'm going to send these out. These are mustard seeds. God says if you have the faith the size of a grain of mustard seed. And I was walking down, I know I've shared this before, but walking down the food aisle, don't worry, wasn't cooking, just on my way to the pet aisle, but anyway, I happened to, to pass the, uh, yes, the cereal aisle, um, I happened to pass the spice aisle, and I looked over, now this is 20 years old, right Dave, where's my friend Dave, he's the, he's the man, I met Dave at church, one of the first people that I sat down with going through a hard time, and he's a counselor, and I said, well, what if I do if both my parents die and, and it's just me and, you know, because both my parents were sick at the same time. And he said, well, well, Samantha, that's where your faith comes in. I'm like, what is faith? And he just kind of looked at me like that dog tilt. I was like, man, more problems than I thought. No, he goes, and he just goes, I said, you know, everybody in this was the first time I started going to church. And, and so I said, you know, everybody in this place always talks about faith. How do I get it? Can I buy it? Wow, that was a lot of work for you. But anyway, he ended up, um, and he came in from Virginia just to be here. So thank you, Dave. 
David is all part of the vision, and he and Linda and, and the other David, when we prayed over that original list, he has seen the fruit 100,000 times over from just, and he knew me when I couldn't get up and speak in front of people. <laughs> now everyone's like, please mute her, mute her, I tell you. But anyway, as I walked down the spice aisle, all of a sudden I saw mustard seed, which then I realized, oh man, God wasn't kidding. It really is, you know, in the scripture and it's here. But then I realized how small it was. You can't even see it. I'll let it drop. But, um, but all of a sudden it made it so real to me that he said, if you just have the faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you can move mountains. And that was when I realized that no matter how impossible something seemed to me, that this is all he was asking me to have. He was only requiring me, it's okay, it's okay, Samantha, if you don't have enough faith to believe that if your parents go, that you won't be able to make it without them. Because if this is all you have, I'll give you the rest. So I want to pass this around, and uh, as you take it, I'm not here, as you take it tonight, take a few, whatever, it keeps multiplying, I don't even know who's filling it. I don't know who's filling it. But, um, but just, we call it faith seed, right? But anyway, take it and put it in your wallet, put it in your pocketbook, and there's something that you're believing for or hoping for. Maybe there's nothing even now, but maybe something is going to come down the pike, and you can say, I don't think I have enough faith. And then you look at that and say, well, I have this much. I can offer this much. So thank you, Sally Ann. Anyway, at this time, I'd like to just receive a love offering for all the different artists that were here tonight. They all did this on a volunteer basis, and uh, I would like to divide it among all of them. And uh, let's take a moment out. Let's pray. And then those of you who need to leave, feel free to leave. But those of you who want to stay, we have a different kind of encore. And big, big thank you to Glenn. Two nights of his life. Thank you, Glenn, among many, many others. What a blessing. And thank you, Marge, for lending him to us. <laughs> Beautiful wife. All right, let's pray over this offering, and then we're going to have a nice little surprise for you. And I don't know, for those of you who are over here, you may want to move on the other side after we receive the offering. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this evening. We thank you for each artist, Lord, those who are new, those who from 20 years ago came to join us tonight. Father, thank you for a night that gives you all the glory, Lord. You have done this, Lord. I just said yes, but you have done everything, and you are the one who sustains it and keeps it going. So, Father, I ask you to bless this offering, that we can bless the music. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. About four years ago, Samantha had shared um, that prayer, and she also invited anyone to take a mustard seed and pray on it and have faith that God would move a mountain in your life. And four years later, I have a beautiful ministry called Moving Mountain Ministry. That's, well, Samantha opened the door, that the vision that God had put on my heart with the prayer of that mustard seed. So if anyone wants it, I'm going to come around because it's a blessing. Amen. I love hearing that. All right, so for those of you on this end, you might want to move... And please know, if you need to leave, don't feel that you have to stay, okay? This is just going to be a lot of fun for those of you who've been coming over the years. You might recognize some people, and you might recognize yourself. So. <laughs> on, and I definitely want, if we can help Sweet Bob get where um, he'd be able to see it. Even if it was right here. Maybe Maureen can help. I think you'll be able to see it from where you are. I think you're good. I think it's just sweet bomb and I'm just waiting for it. Oh, right. Now, no heckling from the front. All right. Some of you are going to laugh. <laughs> 
I want you to know Barney ended up meeting her husband here and she married him, Bill Smith. Can we cut the lights? Can we cut the lights? Somebody's down to their last time. Rhonda, our first volunteer. I love you, Rhonda. That's a little bit of heaven, the first one. The little girls who love Trinity. Pete Potofsky, famous comedian now in Germany. Little bit of heaven. 
Oh, sweet young yeah. girl dancer. Jackie, Sam Powell. Pursuing JC. Magic by Vinny. Eyewitness. The line get in. The deep end gang. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Haley man. Oh, me and Phil, Stacy Luca. Ah, uh, status four. Yeah. Temptation four tops. Dave Pettigrew Man. Cheryl Keggy from Tennessee. Dominic McCurley. Heart Song from Westport. Joanne McCormick teaching. Frank and Patche. <laughs> Frank and Patche. <laughs> Frank and Patche. Frank and Patche. Frank and Patche. Frank <laughs> She's our comedian. John Chen. Scott Hall. Patty Girl. Her musical debut. Oh, Rev Seven. Karen Orlando. Oh, we need this picture. Oh, my goodness, Karen and Janine. <laughs> Fabulous job. Nancy and Bill. We just need the other lights off.